uh, what happens when Tiger calls and says I'm coming to town? Like, and, and he says I need a caddy. Like, yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, so I'm taking this one. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> so the I, I'm just full disclosure. I'm a, I've been a massive fan of his since. Uh, two things happened. I, I coach holder at OSU. Um, I worked at OSU golf camps, believe it or not, as a, as an OU guy. But his dad and my granddad were best buddies in the West Texas oil fields, okay. and we didn't know that at the time. We found that out later. Um, and I asked him a question. This is you know probably ninety two or three. Is he as good as everybody says? He's he goes. He's the best I've ever seen, and it's not even close. And you know. Coach Holder's not much on hyperbole, right? He's like, he, he doesn't like, say wow. good things. Yeah, about right. Anybody. Yeah, so I was like, there's no chance. And then, and then my middle brother Craig yeah. and Alan Bratton, now the coach at OSU, I think this is right. They played with Tiger in Tiger's first collegiate round okay. at uh, in New Mexico. And Craig called me collect, which I was like, what's up? And he's like, I finished the first day of the Tucker, which was the name of this tournament. I was like, why are you calling me? He's like, I played with Tiger today. And I go, uh, was he as good as everybody says? And he goes, no, he's way blanking better. And I go, really? He's like, you can't believe how good this guy is. So I automatically became, okay, I'm intrigued by this guy. And then he burst on the scene and, uh, you know, in, in such a huge way. And, and everybody's taking shots. at him. getting back to that kind of like hunter hunted mentality. He immediately was the hunted even though he had the hunter mentality, but everybody was trying to knock him off his perch, you know, whether it's media or players or whatever. And, um, to, to see that. So fast forward and I get, a, I got a call from David Charles at the PGA, Bob Charles son, who's, who's one of the higher ups at, um, with the PGA. And he said, Hey, and it was it just, you know, it was, the t- it was, you know, a month or two out, we were closed yeah. and it's just, you know, the phone's ringing every day, but Hey, what, what can I do? Right. I said, what to DC? And he said, hey, I need you to run point on something. I said, yeah, what do you got? And he's like, um, big cat's coming to town. I was like, I go, the cat's coming to Tulsa? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, wants to play a practice round. Is that okay? I said, are you asking me if it's okay if Tiger Woods plays a practice round? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, uh, yeah. I was like, yeah, are you kidding? He can play right now if he's here. And uh, um, I go, what do you need me to do? And he goes, I'm going to connect you to uh, Rob McNamara, who's kind of his right hand guy, kind of his handler, you know, and very close friends. And you can see that and trusted friend. He actually trusts him with his golf swing. Yeah, they're, they're, these guys are tight. So again, I'm going to connect you guys via text. I think they just need a couple caddies and um, keep it under wraps. And I need you to, to just not. He goes, Brian Carnes, who was the, the guy from the PGA that was on site, he knows. And uh, nobody else needs to know. And I said, well, I got called Nick. Uh, our GM, he goes, yeah, yeah, call Nick, but you, the three of you guys have to just keep this. Uh, I didn't tell my wife, I didn't tell Banks, and, and but I called Rob and I said, hey, he goes, he's just a couple caddies. I said, you need help like through the back gate. He goes, no. He goes, once we're in the air, you know, his tail number, they'll track it, then they'll know where he's what he's doing. So that, don't, that Twitter account called it straight away, didn't it? I mean, it, there was somebody like the day before. My my phone started blowing up the day before, like. Is he coming? I was like, hey, I don't know. And, uh, you know, so um, I said, hey, if it's if it's kind of self-serving, but I said, I don't mind. I'll, I'll caddy for him. And I've got a son who loves golf that could caddy for you because that'd be awesome. And I said that way, by the way, nobody else is going to know uh, on top of it. He goes, he'd love to hear. Uh, the changes in the golf course from, from you. And I was like, yeah, right. What's, what am I going to tell this guy? And so, yeah. And um, so I, I did tell my wife the night before and she was pissed. And so like, I can't believe you didn't tell me and trust. I was like, and then she didn't sleep at all that night. She's like, I'm glad you didn't tell me because I wouldn't have been slept for a week. And so um, the PJ junior league uh, team, team Oklahoma was here filming a promo um uh, with Cameron Young, PJ professional son, that's the, obviously a star, and they didn't. The P, even the people from the PJ didn't know. Like nobody from the PJ knew that that he was coming on property, and uh, so we, they took a little break in the shooting of whatever the what the promo was for uh, for the PJ Junior League. In Team Oklahoma, the year before, had finished third. They won. They won the stroke play piece, and they were really. It was a fun, fun, uh, cool experience. So these guys. I knew all the kids as an assistant coach mm-hmm. and uh, we were um, down here and I pulled Banks in the office and said, Hey, told him what was going on. I said, have you seen your phone? He goes, no. And I told him and he's like, am I going to get to meet him? I said, you're going to, Oh yeah, you're going to meet him. <laughs> I said, you're going to, you're going to watch him for four hours. So I said, I'm counting for him. You're counting for Rob. And he fell on the ground and like put his hands over his face. And, and, uh, and, and I said, Hey, I don't know 
the conversation. I said, if he says he may talk to us all day, he may not say two words to us all day, but we get to watch the best who's ever done it up close and let's learn from him. No phones, put your phone in your pocket and uh, let's just enjoy the day and, and, yeah. and what it is. And, and of course he talked all the, like, and he remembered every shot from, from uh, 07. He remembered things were had changed. He asked opinions. I mean, I was like, I think you want to hit it over here. He's like, yeah, yeah, you definitely want to get out here. And he's like making notes. And, and, uh, it was really fascinating. He's a, he's a Dodger fan. He told me that he was in the, in the stands when Kirk Gibson hit the, the famous home run in 88, um, and had nachos and beer poured all of him. He was, you know, 10 or 13 or something like that, or 12 or 13 years old. And, uh, so we had, and he was incredible to banks. Like they, I did take one picture of and the, the picture, that one where Banks is walking right next to him. I threw a water bottle away and I looked up and I was like, yeah, I'm taking a picture of that. Yeah. The, 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 the cat with, with my kid. And, um, it was just, it was a, it was a surreal day. I mean, it was, it was so fun to watch him go about his business and, and his leg, you know, just seeing it. It's like, golly, up close. He was, it was, he, he would, if he could just teleport shot, shot, he'd win again. Yeah. Like he, it's, it's so good. And other players that came in that knew that, that I'd caddy for him, they're like, how's it, how do you hit it? And I said, well, it's incredible. You played with it. No, I've never played with it. I've just heard it's incredible. So you got these elite guys coming to play in the PGA Championship. They're like, that's what they all think of it. Like, this guy hits it on the button. And then he hit it through all these different windows. Never looked like he changed anything in his setup. Our greens had just been top dressed. So they were sandy, which I didn't get a chance to watch him. But taking the putter cover off that putter, you talk about being nervous. His CFO was just walking around, and he goes, how much do you think that putter's worth under your arm? And I was like, I don't know, but I'm scared to death. Do it happen don't right tell here? Me. <laughs> and he, uh, and, and he, uh, and he said that there was like the time there's a set of irons had been sold for like five, five million bucks or something like that. That he said, they're really not tigers. And he said, he's got some stuff out there that, that has been sold. But I said, I don't know one thing, this thing right here. I mean, just looking at it, I didn't take a picture of it. I, I you know, I didn't want to break their trust, but, but it was, it was unbelievable. And it's just got an old crappy, putter cover on it that's been the velcro is almost torn away everything else i'm thinking and it's nicked up and, and dinged up and i couldn't help thinking my dad because like hey if you see somebody with a new putter go ahead and put them in a putting contest but if you see somebody with a banged up putter yeah and this thing is just is just destroyed i mean there's nicks and it's beat up everywhere he's he's the same shaft you know like there's the, the steel's coming off and it's like a little rusty part on the shaft it's just awesome and uh and on on uh one quick story on that is on on 17 he, he he's, he's pretty colorful with his language mm-hmm. on 17 uh i had got the whole locations from the senior pj the year before and his cfo and i put tees down where the four whole locations were just so they could putt to him and we're over on the right side of 17 i'm talking to chris and and uh, and Banks is over wa- just watching Tiger putt and Rob's over there putting too. And Tiger goes, okay, uh, Rob, he goes, five bucks closest to the, to the tee next to the pro. And he goes, Banks, you got to get in this too. He goes, but you can't use that piece of blank two ball putter that, that Rob, he called Rob Robin when he was kind of giving him a hard time. When you Robin used, you got to use my putter. I should have taken a picture of that, right? So, um, Tiger putts and putts, it, of course, like this from 50 feet. Rob putts it like 15 feet short and to the right. And Banks, at the time, was putting cross-handed. He since went back to conventional and just a little trying it. And so he grabs a cross-hand and Tiger slaps him on the shoulder. He goes, Banks, what are you doing? He's like, Bang. I mean, like, he turns white. He's like, <laughs> he goes, what you? he goes, nobody's ever used my putter with a cross-handed grip. And he, I mean, he literally like the blood rushes out of Banks's body. I thought, I thought, oh my god! And he just slaps him on the shoulder and said, "I'm blanking with you." And let's see it. And he rolls it up there to like right next to Tiger's ball. And he's like, "Robin, you should, he you should be canning for him." And this, and he put his arm around Banks. And I mean, it was, it was, it was a really cool deal. And then during the tournament, it was it was the same. Like he 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 found Banks, and we talked, and he um, all that crap on Twitter with it with uh, apparently. Patrick Reed's wife giving PJ in a hard time for letting me caddy for him and all the other stuff. He, he had a good laugh about that. And, and, um, um, and then banks played with Charlie in a tournament last, it had been about a year ago now. Uh, and we had a great visit and, and, uh, it, it was pretty cool. And he, he was super to banks. He, he, you know, he, he called him B and Banksy all day and, and banks played really nice in front of him. And, and, uh, 
and the next day he didn't play very good. It was a qualifying tournament. He was upset. I said, hey, this is a win. He goes, how's it a win? I didn't, I didn't qualify. I said, you played great golf in front of the most intimidating guy to ever, definitely the most intimidating player of all time. And I said, you flourished in it, right? And uh, you didn't play good today. I think there's probably a little emotional letdown and fatigue of kind of build up of, of doing that. And uh, you'll learn from it. But but uh, you you handle it. And by the way, he on the putting green that morning, he, he walked over while I was getting the, getting the cart and, and some waters. And he said, hey, B, go win this thing today. And Charlie had played bad the first day and then played great the second day. And Charlie won the qualifier this year, that, that same one. Um, just just recently, they had it on the, 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 the note of a gay term. Yeah. And um, I said, hey, the goat was calling you B and Banksy and told you to go win the thing. I said, take that for what it's worth and get let that inspire you to practice. So um, as big a fan as I was, I'm a bigger fan now. And and uh, I, I, I'm thankful for what he's done for the game. And uh, I'm thankful that I got to watch that unfold, you know, in real time. And, but I hate what he has to go through on a daily basis. I hate it for him just as a, as personally, just to see because helicopters flying above the second hole. We got people in the trees behind six and everywhere he goes, it's the same. Yeah. And you're like, it's crazy. Wow. Mm-hmm. He's not really even a superstar. He's, he's like a cultural icon. He's, mm-hmm. you know, he's uh, Muhammad Ali. He's Michael Jordan. Uh, for sure. He's mm-hmm. every one of those, um, those people, Elvis press. I mean, it's like, it's just a, it's a different deal wherever he goes. And uh, like I said, thankful to watch him play, mm-hmm. uh, watch him through his career and what he's done for bringing people to the game. But man, mm-hmm. what a tough, uh, what a tough road. Uh, yeah. It is. It's just a, it's a different deal. So was it? I mean, when you see him hit it for the first time, and I had friends of mine send me that, you know, the video of him teeing off on one was going round. Yeah, and I, I had that, and I text Reagan, and Reagan was. I think Reagan got the all clear. Maybe to go out and take photos on the back. He line. did. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. Great yeah, he did get some uh, great photos. You know, I said, "How is it?" He goes. Dude, there's people climbing the trees, the fence, like it's chaos here yeah. right now. Nick, like, Nick basically walked the perimeter, and we had Tulsa extra Tulsa PD just to make sure things were, yeah. were okay. Um, yeah, w- watch him hit it, watch him pitch. I really want to watch him pitch and putt. Just yeah. it's so fun to to watch him do that. But golly, it's yeah, and it um, it little like golf geeks would love this. Like on eight, he had a three wood, and it was really windy that day, and he hit a three wood, and like looked like an eight iron, right, sky high, right in the middle of the green. And then on nine, because he remembered that he hit something short of the bunkers, on nine he took a five wood, so more loft, and hit it like a third as high. And just this little missile. I was like, okay, wait, he just how do you how do you do that? <laughs> so, yeah, you talk about checkers and chess. I mean, it's it's he's taking and just and talent. I mean, uh, he takes a three wood and hits it like this up into the wind, right in the middle of the green. Takes a five wood like this, and uh, you know, even at the elite elite player, there's not many that can do that. No. They're just they're just he's just a different dude. Mm-hmm.